everyone, Jeremy Duckworth, the racer guy, and I'm here at the Arc Apparel Race Shop. And we've got some carts behind us. I'm just gonna walk you through how we scale. It's gonna be very basic how we scale out our carts. So I think we're gonna use a cart that uh, my son Bodhi was driving last weekend and just see what the numbers are and try to see if we can help him a little bit on the track. So one of the first things on the scales is you wanna make sure that your scales are level. Um, you either want them in the same spot and you shop every time. You want consistency. So we got them on a scale stand. We can level this out pretty easily. If you don't have a stand, then you can just shim it up or whatever you can do. But you want to make sure that they're the same every time so you can have some kind of consistent readings. All right, and just make sure when you get your scales on there, depending on what kind of scales you have, you want to make sure that it's sitting on there right because it could have a big difference on the way the weight percentages come out if one of the tires is sitting off the scales. So just make sure you get your, your cart, and sometimes you have to move it around. Just make sure that it's sitting on there pretty centered. All right, so the next thing you need when you scale out your cart is you need a driver. So today, this is Bodie's cart that he raced. Um, we never did get a scale out before he drove it. So he didn't actually race it, but he took it to test and tune, did some, some laps in it. But this will be the first time we scale it. So we're curious to see where it's at right now because it, he seemed a little loose out there. But um, we want to get them a good baseline. That's the main thing you want to scale so you have a good baseline. But so hold on, go ahead and grab it, go ahead and get in there. And go ahead and hit the brakes, buddy. Hit the brakes. All right, just hold those brakes. We don't want you rolling off there. Good thing. Car, you don't need your helmet on, but these carts, they're pretty light, so. Let's go ahead and use the helmet. So as you're sitting on here, now we can come over here to the pad and we can kind of see what the percentages are. All right, so if you've never scaled a car or a race car before, there's basically three percentages. I mean, we want the total weight, but we're looking at the left side and across and the rear. So basically you can kind of come over here and look. This is our left, left front, 43, 69, yeah, 68, 69, looks like, let's just go to 69. And then 76 left rear, but 41 on the right rear. So now we're gonna add for our cross, we're gonna add this up. We're gonna add up our total, which is 230. So we're gonna add these two up and then divide it. And that's gonna give us our cross. All right, so 76. Plus 69 is 145. 145 divided by 230. 63% cross. That's probably pretty close to what we're looking for in this car. We'll actually get the baseline for what they recommend, but I would say we're in the ballpark for sure. So now what we want to do is find our we want to find our rear. So same thing, we're just going to add up our rear. So it makes it 117, then we're going to divide it by the total 50% rear. To me, that seems a little light. That might be why he was missing some forward bite up off the corner, 50% rear. Like I said, I don't know what the recommendation of the baseline for this card is. Um, what is this, a Phantom? What kind of card is this, Jace? Phantom? This is an Icon. So it's a PRC Icon, so we'll find out what it is. But So now we're going to do the left. So our left percentage is 51.7. So let's just say 52% left. Round it up. So it's 52% left, 63% cross and 50% rear. Um, the only problem with him on this cart, as you can see, we can't really move the seat back. So we'll have to get lead or something, move some lead back here, which wouldn't be bad. I'd probably actually mount some lead to the rear, but um, we'll find a way to get some more rear percentage, I think, in it, but. All right, so found, this is about 10 pounds, I think, lead, so. Jace, we're gonna put one on. We're just gonna set this on the cart for now and just see how it changes our how it changes our weight here. Let's see if that did anything, because we're probably gonna 
bolt them right here to get some rear, but let's just see if that did anything there. Yep, that was about 10 pounds. So now, so that made it up, that's 51.6. So I put up 51.6, almost 52%. So that's a lot closer. So that's right there. Um, I think when we put it on here, if I just slide up just a bit, buddy. Okay, can you hold these in for me? You're gonna have to sit back and hold these down. Just sit right there and hold these down, okay? Put them, hold them right there for me. Well, that changed it up to 53%. That's all it needs. All right, I think you're good. I'm gonna take these from you. Okay, can you feel them? Okay, thank you. All right, so what all we did was we basically, we're gonna probably mount about five to 10 pounds here. 10 pounds puts them up to almost 54% back here. And that gets the weight up higher. So you're gonna get more weight transfer to the rear tires. Um, you could even do five here, but we'll probably do 10, but just depending on track conditions and what we're looking for, if the track's got a lot of grip, we might take five pounds off here, maybe leave right here. But the higher up you get your weight, the more it's gonna transfer. So you could actually mount less weight higher up and get more of effect than if you mount it way down here and farther in. So that's kind of what we're gonna look for here. Um, and this is, the rest of it will just be fine tuning the track, but we're just trying to get a good baseline so we get to the track we know where we're at and then that way we can make changes depending on the track conditions and what he tells me because it's all about what he tells me hopefully let me hold it for you so it roll off all right so i was going to show you some other options of way to mount the lead um, just depending on the percentage and stuff but you can select this one here this one actually needs some nose weight so this has got i mean it's got a pretty good size it looks like about 10 pounds probably mounted right there, right on the nose. So um, there's different ways to mount them. Um, the seat seems to be the most popular. You can look at mine over here and where I've got some of my lead mounted. This is more of a neutral. If you're just adding weight, I like to get in the center of the cart. Um, the center of the cart's not gonna change your percentages, you know, left, front to rear. And then I kind of just mount it to however I want, like I said, as far as chassis tuning or what I want the cart to do. And that all depends on what track I'm running and track condition. So, but I like to get my, you know, the lead up here, mounted on these frames. There's not a whole lot of mounting places on these frames, but you can find them if you really need them. But the seats seems to be the easiest way to kind of mount them. You can get, you can get the, um, the lead up higher by using the seat for sure. And like I said, the higher you get the lead, the more weight it's gonna transfer. So also depends on the track you're running. So we got our, our lead mounted here, got our driver back in the cart. So now we just need to see what our new weights are gonna be. So here we got our total. Your cross is gonna be your left rear and your right front. So you wanna add up left rear, right front, add those up, and on this one it's 149, and then you divide it 149 by your uh, total weight and then I'll give you your cross. That's your cross that we're always looking at. Don't worry about these, because it's always percentages. Same with your left, just add up your left side, and that'll give you your total left weight, which on this one right now, it's 127, and then you just divide it. And the same on the rear, you wanna add your, your rear weights up, 81 plus 44. There's also a thing called left rear bite. Left rear bite's not a percentage. Um, it's basically how much difference the left rear bite is over how much you know weight the this one has what 35 pounds almost so you got 80 pounds left left rear right rear is 45 
So that's 35 pounds of left rear bite. So um, that's, that's another thing you can kind of tune to how much left rear bite. It's kind of harder in the cars because we don't have suspensions. But um, that's another thing you can look at is just how much left rear bite you want your car to have. Uh, stock cars, we use it a lot more. Um, we use a cross and left rear bite more. But that's something else we can kind of look at. But that's just kind of how you get your percentages if you're new to racing. Or most people know all this kind of stuff, but that's just the way you go about doing it. It's pretty, pretty easy math. Just adding weight to this, and there's no suspension on these stock car. A lot of times you can add weight. It's not going to change your cross. This one, it changed the cross. So we went from a cross of 63%, which is about on the low end of what we want. It put us at 61.8. So we lost over a percentage, 1% of cross weight, which is pretty big. That's a pretty big adjustment. So we want to put that back in, but we're not going to add lead to it. We're actually going to go in here and change what would be weight jacks, but we're going to move washers here on the spindles and actually move the, the frame height to get that back. And that's not going to really adjust our rear, take our rear back out that we put in. But doing that, adding this left rear, it did change our cross. It actually took some out. So um, we'll go back in, we'll make this adjustment, and then we should be really close. This is the best way to learn too, It's just start working on this stuff. All right, so these cars don't have weight jacks. Some of them actually do, but these here don't. So actually what we're gonna do is, um, we gotta move these washers here. So you can see there's a stack of washers. And instead of having a weight jack where you actually you know, turn the bolt. We move our washers and move the spindle, and that's how we're going to change the cross. And we got it on this side as, as well here. But one thing that we found out, you want to make sure when you put your cross in there that you have, you know, the, enough adjustment left. So when you get to the track, you can make an adjustment um, so you're not like maxed out. You don't want to max all your weight out, but you do want to decide which one you want to do. The left front, you can move it up, but it all depends on how much you have here. Um, especially when you're just trying to get a good baseline set up. So um, I'll probably move this, probably gonna move this left front here. All right, so we got the car back on. We got our driver back in the car. He's gonna put his helmet on. Just put that thing on there. And we're gonna recheck our weight since we've made the adjustments here on the spindles for the cross. So what we did is we went ahead and just made, it was almost maxed out, so we just moved some washers equally on both sides, and we're gonna make, take the rest, I think, on the rear, and the left rear. So we'll go ahead and get our, get our numbers here. So I went ahead and got the numbers, and the only thing that's really changed is the cross. It's up 72% from about 62%, so. We're gonna have to, have to take some of that out, but at least we know we got some adjustability in here for the track. We're gonna adjust it both ways. Um, so that's what we want. So we're gonna go now, we're gonna go to the left rear and we're gonna adjust the cross in the left rear. And hopefully we can get it about 65%, I think is what we're looking for. Like I said, you want to win? Yes. Okay. All right, just so you know, finally ran all the numbers on it and we're right where we want to be. We got the cross back up, 64% um, is what we wanted to do. Just getting a good baseline, that's you know, a good starting point. And now we got adjustability in the cart since we got the washers kind of split and we got the rear um, right where we wanted as well. As far as like where that, the weight jack in this cassette here is on the rear axle. So we got a good starting point. So that's what we want. And um, the other thing, when you scale this car, make sure you set your air pressures. Make sure you put the cart like it's gonna race. If you scale it, the air pressures can really change the weight. Another thing too is tire stagger. If, you, um, if you're out there changing sets of tires and your stagger is different, especially on the front, or stagger on these things will change your weight percentages. So make sure your stagger is the same, or you, at least you know uh, you know, when you change stagger, what it's gonna do to the cart. So that's pretty much it. Um, scaling, like I said, very basic, but it's definitely needed. We're gonna scale the rest of them, get baselines, so we'll be ready to race. See you at the track.